Do you remember where you were on September 11th? I do. I was standing on the roof of 253 Fifth Avenue, looking downtown as the buildings fell. And you remember, too. We all remember, because it was, for the first time, an event that was, that was covered in real time, that was seen in real time. New York, Paris, Israel, Iraq, we all remember. It was, for the first time, an event that we all experienced. And yet, strangely, we know little. We know the facts, the planes, the buildings, the sky, the loss. But the complex nuance and the historic detail is at risk of being lost to history. Seven stories underground, at the site, at the archaeological heart of the World Trade Center, a small group of men and women are working to make sure that doesn't happen. They're building the National 9-11 Memorial Museum. For the past 10 years, they've been struggling to assemble a narrative that will knit together the details, facts, and memories. They've allowed me to document this process, to make a film and prepare a book, because the process of how this story is told is important. They want to make sure that future generations understand that our collective memory of 9-11 is still very much a work in progress. But before we venture underground, let's start with what we know. Ten years ago, it was simply known as the pit. Now the site has been transformed into Mike LaRod's extraordinary memorial, reflecting absence. Arad began with images of loss, with two voids, and he started with sketches. He imagined an open sky so that the buildings would never be replaced. Today there stands a great green canopy of white swamp oak and the gentle sound of water rushing into the voids. The memorial serves as an architectural roof to the seven-story museum that lies below. Alice Greenwald is the museum's director. She and her team have been working to gather our collective memories. Here's a moment of one of the conversations in the green room. What we're saying is the post-9-11 world is a world of questions. And we are asking questions that we may have had before. And how do you balance security for you? Your, your movement through the exhibition is a movement towards understanding. It may not be that you may not get there, right. but it's a movement towards understanding. The one thing that we know for sure that came out of 9 was an absolute assertion of the capacity of human beings to do good, to be compassionate, to be empathetic, to transform um, the worst of human nature into the best of human nature. To tell this story, the team will need evidence. Jen Ramirez is the museum's chief curator. She's the keeper of objects, images, audio recordings, and personal remembrances. A pair of shoes, a fireman's turnout jacket, a coffee mug. Museums tell stories. They tell stories with things, Ramirez told me. People will come to this site to bear witness. To preserve and protect the remains of the day, the World Trade Center team and the Port Authority began very quickly to move large artifacts to JFK, where they commandeered Hangar 17. In the days immediately following, they were able to move large pieces of steel, and many of it was put behind this hangar door. And I have to tell you, I've seen hundreds of hours, I experienced things that probably very few people have seen, and despite that, I really wasn't prepared for what I saw when I walked through the hangar. Each piece of steel is like a human being, it all has a different physiology because of what it's been through. And we know that if we don't control the climate in the museum, the skin will start to exfoliate, there will be rusting, and so we've been really trying to nail down environmental criteria you know, without causing us to create a mausoleum to this material. As you see the size of the devastation and the material, things like Ladder 3 are stunning. Ladder 3 is now on its way back to the site where it will be featured in the museum. In addition, crushed taxi cabs, a subway car, a rack of bicycles. Each of these artifacts tells a story, and Ramirez protects them like her children. By the spring of 2002, the cleanup was mostly complete, and all the artifacts had been moved from the site, save one, a large column 
30 feet tall, 62 tons, that was known as the last column. It had been signed by the men and women who were the recovery workers in memory of their fallen brothers and sisters. And it was trucked back to Hangar 17. There it was preserved. And here's an example of how that preservation took place. When the word got out that this was going to be the last ceremonial piece of steel, thousands and thousands of individuals who'd been participating in the rescue recovery efforts started to market. This is a piece that was one of the few pieces that went directly from Ground Zero here. When it arrived, I mean, as you can sense from all of the kind of improvised postings, you know, duct tape and scotch tape and magic marker. There was a kind of sacredness to it. And this was never intended to be anything more than kind of a spontaneous memorial marker. Museum that's not a mausoleum. Over the past five years, I've watched an empty pit turn into a memorial and a plaza and now a soaring underground space. I've watched dis discussions witness debates and arguments and resolution. The artist renderings I'm about to show you of the museum are currently under construction, and if the plan continues according to pace, it will open mid-2013. The museum will be presented in three sections, the world before 9-11, the day of 9-11, and the world after 9-11. And then in the memorial section, visitors will find themselves staring at an extraordinary open space, the West Chamber, now known as Foundation Hall, where you'll actually be able to see the foundation of the World Trade Center. On the back wall, you'll see the slurry wall, which holds back the Hudson River, and you'll see the last column standing in the middle. You'll also be able to connect with 2,982 names, turn those names into people, in some cases hear their voices or the voices of their loved ones, turn those numbers into names. But the most important thing, the thing I wanted to leave you with today, is that because we're all part of this story, because we're all witnesses, you'll have an opportunity to record your story when you go to the museum. And I think this is incredibly important, because not all of us feel the same way, have the same memories, or, or have the same perspective, depending on where you come from. So this is a story that the museum is committed to not glossing over or sugarcoating. And the fact that they're inviting the world to come and tell their story, I think, is very, very important. In closing, I want to just leave you with this one thought. 9-11 happened. We can't take that back. But what we collectively do with that is up to us. Thank you very much. <laughs>